Yama, I'm Jack, and this is Newsbreak. Artificial intelligence has played a part in bringing us one last song from one of the world's greatest bands, the Beatles. Josh took a listen. It's a pretty exciting day for Beatles fans. No, not a Beatle, the Beatles, these guys. Ah, uh, who are they again? With only one of the most influential rock bands ever, and you've probably heard some of their songs. Here comes the sun, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Now they're back for one last track, and that's a pretty big deal. For one, the band's actually been broken up for more than 50 years. And then there's the issue that only two of the members are still alive today. So how was it possible? Well, it's all thanks to artificial intelligence and some old demo tapes from singer John Lennon, which were recorded before his death in 1980. The band originally tried to piece together the track in the 90s, but the quality of the tapes just wasn't good enough, and the tech to clean up John's vocals wasn't up to scratch yet. But fast forward to today with the help of AI to isolate John's voice, I know it's true. and after laying down new bass and drum tracks and combining those with recordings of the late George Harrison on guitar, it gave us this. It's all because of you. The brand new song has delighted diehard fans across the world and proved that AI is capable of doing some pretty remarkable things. Oh, coral spawning has started in the Great Barrier Reef. It happens every year around the November full moon when tiny reproductive cells are released from coral into the water, which join together to create new coral. Researchers are there to analyze and collect some of the cells so they can grow their own baby corals to eventually reintroduce in parts of the reef that have been damaged by coral bleaching. Fashion waste is a growing problem in Australia, but some Aussie scientists say they might have a solution. Here's Justina. This might look like colourful Play-Doh, but would you believe it if I told you it's actually old clothing? About a year ago, we started working on this particular part of the project, which is funded by Sustainability Victoria, to look at a new way to handle textiles and reduce the textile waste problem. And yeah, we sure do have a fashion waste problem. In Australia, we throw more than 200,000 tonnes of clothing into landfill each year. But scientists from Deakin Uni in Geelong reckon they figured out a way to tackle this problem. They're using machines to crush up old clothes. The broken up fabric is then mixed with water and small beads to grind the the pigment from the fabric into a liquid, which is then dried into a clay or a fine powder. And this particle can then be used as a pigment to dye other materials such as other textiles or paper, wood, plastic, any other material that you'd like. Pigment is what's used to colour things like paint, dye and clothing. The team says this is a much greener alternative to other pigments and have already started testing it out with local artists. If we can actually take these beautiful bright fabrics, break it down into a usable pigment and then put these amazing pieces of art in the world, there was just something really amazing about that. And eventually they hope this pigment from our old clothes could go into creating new clothes in a much more sustainable way. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Wait, how many? Oh, three. Just three more stories until the end of the show. No, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the audience. 3.6 million. That's how many birds were counted during the Aussie bird count, where more than 80,000 citizen scientists took part in counting the birds they spotted around the country. So what did they see? About 154,000 magpies, more than 220,000 noisy miners, and taking the cake for most populous bird was the rainbow lorikeet, with more than 420,000 spotted. A very rare and very large vivid blue diamond is set to go up for auction in Geneva, but how many dollars is it expected to sell for? Apparently more than 77 million Aussie dollars. That's uh, too many for me. And finally, here's a question for you. How many dogs are on this bus? Or maybe the better question is, why are there so many dogs on this bus? Well, they're off to school. No, seriously. The dog bus transports pups in this town in Brazil to a dog training centre, where they learn to be good boys and good girls. And as you can see, they're having a ball. Uh -huh. yeah. oh. That's all we've got for you, but we'll be back next week with more. Bye. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Oh, they hung up on me. Oh wait, it's not even plugged in. <laughs>